there is still a need and desire for direct face-to-face -face communication and the experience of community. Whatever your urbanism, or perhaps even whatever your medium, people coming together in some sort of legible space to communicate, to see and be seen is a manifestation of culture. And I think this doesn't change. I will show three variations on this theme. Rather than describing these three projects in depth, I will describe the starting point and conclude with a reference to urbanism. In between, I'll click through some images for orientation. We're going to start at the large scale. One builds in the already built city. More and more, the urban context is a site as found. We like the Smithson's idea, uh, the possible clues and even magic worlds in the everyday and the ordinary. So that the essence of re-urbanization and revitalization is to imagine an art of inhabitation. So I'm going to talk about public spaces and we're thinking of how they might be inhabited. And the tools we use are integrated multi-scale design and planning, from regional vision to the design of public space, and the urban living room, a cliche from the 1950s, a recurring metaphor of city, house, and room. Let's see, I don't need to look. So, the first project, I thank Ed Soja for, for injecting and championing the region, is a project at regional scale. It's the Green City, uh, the Grün Metropole, the Oregio 2008. It's a project by, uh, led by Henri Bava, a land landscape architect, two urbanists, myself and my assistant Eric Behrens, uh, the artist Stephen Craig, and the office Agence Terre. It is uh, for a new structure and development plan uh, for a tri-national future region in Europe, some 110 by between 18 and 40 kilometers wide. We have three go goals, to renew river and park systems, to remediate brownfield sites, to create a legible structure for development, to fashion identity for the tri-national post-industrial region. I'll show you what I mean by post-industrial. What links these three areas is an underground coal seam uh, that is the basis, was the basis for the mining industry from the mid-end of the 19th century to the 1970 when it stopped. So what you have here is the ass end of Germany, Holland, and Belgium, or maybe it can be something else. This underground coal seam lends the surface of the region a thickness. You can see in this diagram how uh, a rural landscape is replaced by the machinery of mining. Uh, the region, flat, is dominated by the coal tips or slag heaps, and even uh, today, well, the last remaining bit is open pit mining, which is continuing today. What you have is a landscape made of a certain number of what we call core elements. Uh, the Topography you see are the slag heaps. Uh, some of them are still warm, uh, and they are overgrown. Uh, underneath are, is a planned mining village. Uh, just over the slag heaps on the other side, you see the cleared brownfield site from the pit head. So you have these elements mixed with the historic landscape and settlement. What we decided to do was to create for this region a main street, uh, a route, the red route, we called it, that runs through and connects all the new and old historical. This is a crude uh, diagram just showing the elements linked together, the attributes of this first gesture, this metropole route, uh, a regional high street, and that is complemented by a green route which connects the riverine systems, uh, the old and the new planned parks. And that has its own system of attributes. Uh, the area was first settled along water, so the historic water mills. 
And these two together form a kind of system, uh, perhaps it's rather kitsch to use a double helix uh, analogy, uh, but it's a system that binds together these core elements uh, to create a potential for future development, uh, to link uh, the region together uh, as a basis for future planning. That's not enough. There has to be a second element, which is communication. And this communication has to be accompanied by a kind of branding, how this project is to be made known. And the most important diagram in this project, I can't read it on the screen, is uh, the process. So that what normally planners or urban designers do, or landscape architects is on the left, that's the spatial system. The communication system works at at least three levels. Uh, obviously political regions and the nation states and cities have to communicate with each other. They have to communicate in a second level with their own constituents. And a third level, uh, the users of the region, the inhabited, inhabitants of the region with their new cell phone technologies uh, can access the information about this project as it's underway, communicate with each other, uh, Teenagers in Germany can figure out where the party is in Holland on Saturday night, and so on and so forth. 80 municipalities, three countries, how to build consensus. So the first project is uh, a network of uh, communication spaces uh, for a region, uh, a new European region to identify itself. The second project uh, we call Immigrant Cultural Spaces. This is a project that hasn't yet started. Uh, this is a crude sketch of the surrounding area. It's in Duisburg in the Ruhrgebiet, in the, in the Ruhr industrial region. Duisburg is one of the cities making up the network of uh, old steel industrial cities. Markslow is a workers' housing district of Duisburg, uh, workers for the massive ThyssenKrupp works, now demolished, that's all, whoops, that's all ThyssenKrupp above. So the original blue collars have left and beginning in the 1960s, uh, Turkish guest workers arrived. And today what you have is a broken and partially empty landscape inhabited by a tough um, immigrant population. So this uh, district is, uh, has elements such as a Catholic church, um, a World War II flak tower, and these are complemented by the first new mosque in Germany, uh, a very important new cultural center, and the uh, a high street, which is the number one bridal fashions for Turkish weddings location in Central Europe. So an aerial photo gives the idea there's the new mosque, the Catholic Church is there. There's some idea of linking these two monuments. That's the view from the steps of the mosque. So there's a population that comes here that uses the space and is not represented. So our goal is to create a spatial structure uh, that can be inhabited by a large number of people using the mosque, a large number of people uh, visiting the bridal fashions, and also to uh, accommodate uh, a difficult social problem, problem which is non-German speaking Turkish immigrants who become older. And so we, we just sketch, uh, the project hasn't even started, somehow can you make a space, uh, what functions could you add to the space before the mosque to, to attract a kind of culture, to attract a use, uh, uh, perhaps a market hall, uh, this badly needed uh, seniors' housing, uh, so that with buildings and with trees can one begin to make a network of spaces linking the mosque to the uh, Christian communities around the Catholic Church. So again, these first sketches trying to tease out what kind of spaces can, be, can uh, bring people together. So that results in the first sketch plan 
which uh, we can go to the city and begin to imagine uh, a future. But this is the key illustration. Somehow, in this preliminary project stage, we find ourselves somewhere between three orientations. We want a physical light and airy spaces. How can we live in air and not live in boxes with holes that we call windows? How can we live with our climate? What can we say about the workers' housing, which has a strange decorative brickwork over fairly hard industrial housing? And what is the relevance what could the relevance be of references to other culture? What can we learn from the Islamic city? Because strangely, in the middle of industrial Germany, in a shrinking city, that's who we're building for. The last project I'm going to show is coming down to a smaller scale, and that's in the city of Stuttgart. Uh, this is drawing is actually showing the development that will take place here, 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 and there, a doubling of the area of the inner city when they bury the railroad, the largest industrial project in the history of the city. It will change the orientation and the balance of settlement in the city, and it exposes this site in red, which is our site in eight acres, former industrial headquarters for the energy, a corporation of Baden-Württemberg, a site that's been closed to the public for 30 years, and open it, and maybe this can be somehow in Stuttgart Ost, eastern part of the city, uh, a new center. It has to be a residential project. It should be a green project. And I started off by saying one builds in the already built city. So we've identified some of the industrial buildings which have a particular character which maybe could be a starting point for the architects who will build the housing there later. We want to keep it as an orientation for future building. There's a crisis with the project because the city doesn't want this project. The city wants this site for itself because it's so central. They want from us only a structure where are the streets? Where are the public spaces? That's it. Our clients are the energy company. They need to know what can we do with this site? What can be marketed? What kind of housing can be built here? And they know that it's no luxury housing, so what kind of social housing, what mix of rent and so on? And we need to explore that uh, typologically and the spatial structure which can bind it together. Because maybe many different people will build here and many different people will live here. So what we're interested in is the core spatial structure, which is the reinstatement of the central street and two pedestrian uh, ways through the site. That's a traditional motif in Stuttgart called Steffele. Uh, there's a 36-foot rise on this site, so it's a series of steps and ramps for people to walk through the city, this part of the city, which was previously closed. And along this street, then, a network, a hierarchy of spaces between pure public to private. Because the question for Stuttgart, and even for mayors of most cities, is how can a young people starting a family not think that they must go out of the city to live in a spatial ambience, to have some private green space. What can architecture do? What can urbanism do to create uh, uh, some version of that in the city? So these uh, public spaces we want to also theme. And the next two uh, slides, that's the master plan and the model, are merely uh, play objects, poorly translated into English, of how we can move around different typologies and still have the spatial structure work. The model is built one to 200 scale. You can stick your head in it because underneath this site, the urban surface of this site lies over World War II bunkers, underground car parks, and 
Cold War bunkers. So it's a three-dimensional project. So urban design project, the urban design project creates a structure and relationship between or for spaces and buildings, obviously, which also means a structure, a relationship between spaces and people, and maybe even a relationship between spaces and culture. Thank you. <laughs>